Okay, I got a quick one tonight. Um, this is kind of a rehash of an older one, um, installing Drupal, Drupal 6 on a web host. This is installing Drupal 7 on a web host. Um, I'm, there's really just a couple parts to it. Um, download Drupal, then upload it to your web host, create your MySQL database and user, and then click install. But um, for those that are kind of confused on those steps, um, we're gonna go ahead and go through it right now. Um, First things first, go ahead and download Drupal. And if you see, they've got a tar and a zip. Um, if you're on Windows, zip will be more native, but um, for everybody else, uh, tar, tarball. Um, and basically, I've got a, a, a Drupal folder going. I'm just going to take this and extract it to my Drupal folder. Um, now, you need a way to upload it. Um, some web hosts provide FTP from, the, from a web console. That's not as fun as using FileZilla. It's just hard. So I've got FileZilla here. I'm already connected into my web host. Um, if this is your first, uh, if you if you want, if you downloaded or created a domain name, um, yourname.com or whatever, uh, and you want it at, you want your Drupal site to be right there, public HTML, this folder right here, um, that's where you're going to go and drop it right in there. But, you know, obviously I'm, I'm going to create a new folder here. Um, I'm gonna call it uh, Drupal 7. And I'll go ahead and go into that directory. And you'll see that I've got an empty directory listing. And over here, I've got Drupal 7.7 .7 right there. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all the files that are in Drupal 7 in FileZilla, and I'm going to um, upload them to uh, the directory. Now the small change here is that you don't have to create your settings dot uh, uh, whatever whatever settings dot uh, PHP file or whatever it was before. Um, so while that's while that's uploading, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my um, web host and I'm going to head over to where my MySQL databases are. Now you can also use Postgres and uh, I forget what the other one is, but you, you can use a couple different. But I'm going to go ahead and use um, MySQL. And I'll create a new one, call it D7, um, right where it says create new database, create it, and I'm going to create a new user, D7, I'm going to type a new password, and it's going to rate me, um, apparently my password strength isn't, ma isn't good enough. Oh, passwords don't match because it helps if you type them correctly. There we go. So it tells you created a user with the password. Um, and so that's the password I'm going to go ahead and use for this particular install. Um, now you need to add that user. To that database, if that makes sense, that user to that database, um, and then give it special permissions. Um, and for right now, we're just going to go ahead and give it all. There we go. Now I'm ready. If my files are done uploading, which they're not, we got a little bit left. Um, you're going to go to your site. Um, And see, it's not quite ready yet. Still waiting on some files to get uploaded. There we go. Oh, I forgot. I gotta have my. Uh... The other thing you need is your PHP, um, your register globals to be off. Um, and I've got a PHP file with that in that. Um, depending on your web host, depends on how they they set some PHP options. And uh, some of them do it in the PHP.ini file. Some of them do it uh, in your HT access file. Some of them have a global for all your sites. Some of them have an individual for each individual site. But um, HostGator has it for uh, uh, individuals, for individual. And I believe Bluehost, Bluehost does too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the standard 
with uh, all the all the basic stuff. Um, do English and then you know it says MySQL, MariaDB, or equivalent or SQLite. And I'm gonna go ahead and do MySQL um, is what it is. And this is the username and password that I created. Um, And then there also there's some advanced options. Um, first timers don't need, really need to do this, but if there's specific port, if you're on um, uh, who is it, uh, GoDaddy, for, and they use a separate SQL server, or you have a separate SQL server, you might need to change your database host, your port, or uh, if you've got multiple installations in one SQL, if you get limited on your SQL databases, then um, you can choose a table prefix. But uh, I don't need any of that for for what I'm doing. It's going to go through, it's going to uh, enable all the modules that I need, dump the stuff into the SQL database, and this is really just about it. This is installing Drupal. After this, it's just about modification and customization of your site. So um, I'm going to go ahead and create some basic options. Um, D7 install. Choose your basic stuff. Uh, that's good enough. And then I like to set it to check for updates and receive email notifications for my um, for my websites. I want to know when when stuff is able to be updated. Um, you don't have to, but obviously I like to do that. So congratulations, I've installed Drupal. Let's go ahead and visit my site. There it is. And this is, I've already logged in as an admin, I'm already there. That's really all it took was a couple minutes. Um, FileZilla, MySQL, and I've got a great Drupal um, install to start modifying. So look at some of the other videos if you want to know what to do, um, some things you can do with Drupal. I hope that was helpful. If, if it was, um, just uh, send me an email, send me some comments, and I'll talk to you guys later.